So if you're trying to get hired as a developer and you're still building a portfolio website from scratch, you're basically wasting time. You don't need another cute weather app. You, you need real projects, right? Projects that scream, I can solve problems. In this video, I'm gonna break down the five projects that actually helped a lot of the developers in my coding bootcamp land jobs, real jobs, and not just interviews. And yeah, I'm also gonna expose the single worst project idea that 90% of beginners waste weeks on. Hey guys, my name is Derek, and I've spent the last five years building tech businesses, bootstrapping up to 100,000 US dollars a month and now I'm going deep into AI. I've hired developers, I've trained them, I've built software that pays for my life and I've seen the same patterns over and over and over again. What works, what does not and that's what you're getting today. I'm going to walk you through five high or ROI programming projects that you can build. Whether you're a beginner, you're a SDS graduate, you're from a coding bootcamp, or you're completely self-taught, it does not matter because in software, what matters the most is the output that you can provide, right? So I'm going to tell you the reasoning behind each one from a first principles perspective. And these are not random fun projects. They solve real problems and build real skills. And at the end, I'm going to show you the most common mistake that holds developers back and what to do instead. So that's not simple. The first thing I will talk about is going to be some form of an automation. You can use Python or JavaScript, but when it comes to automations, usually Python takes the reins. So from a first principles perspective, what is programming really? Programming is about leverage. It's about building a way to multiply your efforts with code. So if you're spending 10 minutes every day doing something manual, organizing files, copying data, scheduling meetings, you can write a script once and basically boom, you just save yourself 60 hours a year. So when I was juggling multiple projects and teams, one of the first scripts I built was a desktop top cleaner. Every time I downloaded files, screenshots, PDFs, random crap from Slack or WhatsApp, they will clutter my desktop. So I wrote a Python script that sorted everything by file type and moved it to appropriate folders automatically every hour. So what this taught me wasn't just syntax. It taught me how to think in workflows, how to identify friction and solve it. And that's what employers really love. It's not about code. It's about thinking and problem solving, right? I've met developers who are good at coding, but they're not able to find solutions to problems. And that, that is a problem on its own, right? So let's move on to the next topic. Understanding how to interact with the real world, right? So combining software with some form of hardware, and that kind of brings us into the realm of IoT, right? Because programming gets a lot more interesting when it leaves your screen. So when I discovered Raspberry Pi, this was a few years ago, it really felt like magic because I can take the tools and the code that I built and literally make coffee happen, right? I built a small home automation setup where my coffee maker turned on 10 minutes before my alarm, didn't you touch a button, just walked into the kitchen and boom, the smell of productivity hit me first. So first principles, again, the real world runs on sensors, it runs on inputs, triggers, and from these inputs and triggers, your code will help you create some form of an output and hopefully a favorable output for you and your team and whoever your users are. So if you can understand this concept, you can build anything basically. And that is what sets you apart. Most developers today are stuck on browser land, which is okay to start with. But if you can kind of like explore some IoT stuff, that's gonna you know put you miles ahead of everyone else. So start simple. Go with like Raspberry Pi, learn how to read from sensors and trigger actions based on logic. You will learn, you know, if our statements, you will learn networking, real-time logic and APIs and deployment. And, and, and bonus, it, it's fun, right? When you show this in interviews, people light up really. They instantly look at you like, wow, this guy so now let's get into some meat, right? If you haven't built a full stack application, you're not ready for most software roles. That's the truth today, okay? Because here's what full stack really teaches you. It's systems thinking. You learn how the front end talks to the back end, how the data flows, how do you manage the state? How do things break? Which by the way, happens all the time, right? The, only, the one that I recommend most would be something like a personal finance tracker because it's relevant. Everyone wants to kind of track their spending, right? You can use play or import CSVs, right? Parse transactions categorize them, build dashboards using React, and manage logic with something like Fast API on the back end. So if you don't like finance, that's fine, right? Build an e-commerce app, right? Even if it's basic, you will learn authentication, you'll learn routing, you'll learn sessions, and you'll learn API handling. The tech doesn't matter. The thinking here actually matters the most, right? You know, you can combine it together to build something like an Amazon clone, you can basically build something else already. And it's so much better learning this way rather than learning, you know, state management on its own or learning, you know, React routing, React routes on its own, right? Learning it while building is going to help you connect your, your, your neural activity, your neural network, your neural activity, whatever you call it, it connects so much better and you actually remember it and understand it. So next time something similar happens, you can apply it instantly. Okay, next thing would be where you unlock the next layer, go into game development. It may sound weird, right? But game development teaches you how to manage state performance and user experience so much better than crud 
CRUD, meaning create, read, update, delete applications. Most of our Web2 world software applications are basically CRUD apps. They're all glorified to-do lists, right? So when I was just getting comfortable with programming, I built a basic physics based mini golf game, you click, hold and release to shoot a ball across a 2D course, right? Gravity, collisions, motion equations, all coded by hand. Then that project stretched my brain in a new direction, right? It taught me about math in programming and about feedback loops. And honestly, it was the first time coding felt like play to me because you can actually play the game after that, right? Even if you're using something like Pi Game or Unity with C Sharp, it's actually worth it, right? Build something people can actually use and smile while using it. It shows personality, it shows effort. Okay, next thing would be the most important one, in my opinion, right? It's to build something that someone, people actually want to use. Yes, you can build a Raspberry Pi project, IoT project, a game development project, or whatever it is, you can build those things, right? But if you build something that other people really want to use, that's how you stand out because it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be useful for that person. And back when I was a broke student, I didn't want to pay for Spotify. So I wrote a script that scraped my playlist data, searched for those songs on YouTube, downloaded them as MP3s and transferred them to my phone. Probably not the most legal thing, but it was practical and it worked. And you know what? People asked me for that script. My friends used it, interviewers talked about it, and it made me pretty memorable. If you can build something that even 10 people use, you're going to be ahead of 99.99% of developers because most of them are still stuck in tutorial purgatory, which is tutorial hell. Just building and copying code and you know coding along to some project, some YouTuber is coding, right? So look around, where do people complain? Where do they say, oh, I wish I wish it was easier or that's that and that's exactly where your project lives. Now let's talk about the worst project you can build. And I guess I think you guessed it because I mentioned it at the start of the video. It's gonna be your personal portfolio website, right? Having one is so important, don't get me wrong, right? But building it from scratch is uh is a waste of time. You'll you'll be wasting weeks tweaking CSS, which if you become an expert, you don't get a job, you're not gonna get a job anyways. You're gonna worry about the layout, you're gonna be debugging tiny issues that have nothing to do with the job you're gonna get. Use a no-code tool, right? Just use something, some free no-code tool. You can use Notion, you can use Webflow, you can use Framer for speed. Or, or just use a WordPress template and throw on a domain because your website is to show your projects, to showcase your personality, is to showcase what you've built, what you've done, right? Spend your time building those things to be put inside. Your website is just your website. It's a little book about you, right? So but the, the content, the projects, your story, your credibility, not how custom your button animations are. So spend that energy building real apps, not pixel perfect self promote. And at the end of the day, hiring managers don't care about shiny portfolios. They care about proof, proof that you can think, proof that you can solve problems, proof that you can build things that people want. And here's the short list. Automate something in your life. Build something that talks to software and hardware that connects it together and ship a full stack application that mimics a real business. Something like an Airbnb clone maybe, right? Create a game that teaches you how to handle logic and feedback. Build something people actually use, even if it's ugly, but as long as it's functional and people want to use it, right? People get excited over it. Okay, so that's it. That's the playbook. And here's the part that nobody tells you. People always think you got to do all of it, but no, you don't need to do all five. Just do two solid projects, done, do it well, show it, explain it clearly. And that's basically enough to separate you from 99% of other junior developers. Okay, if this helped you do yourself a favor, don't just watch another video, pick one project, block out two weekends, build it, show it, and ship it fast. And if you want more breakdowns like this or on building real world skills, scaling your career, thinking like a founder, like a software developer, hit subscribe. You're not just learning how to code, we're learning how to build together. I'll see you in the next one.